Walters, let's talk about this because um, you know when people travel, immigrants, everybody, they want to go to Europe, they're going to the United States of America, they're struggling to go elsewhere to look for better life. And then they bundle them and want to send them back to Africa. As you said, some countries in Africa are better than where they're coming from. But can you imagine what, what, what like you who has crossed the days that has succeeded to reach UK or crossed the sea and succeeded to reach UK and you're about to be deported back to an African country. Most of them, are, they were not trying to go to another African country. Those African countries were there. But they choose to go to Europe. And they, they knew about, about it. Yeah. And now they're being deported to an African country. What do you think is going to be their faith at this particular time? Uh, they don't really have a choice. Because if they had a choice, I know most of them would, are going to run away. But like uh, deporting them to Rwanda at this particular time, it's, it's not, is it going to be really the best for them vis-a-vis -vis what they were thinking? Because before leaving their country, that's not what they had in mind. And so now they are being sent back to Africa, even if it's not their country, but back to Africa, which is not what they planned for. Well, I think, uh, first of all, it's going to be demoralizing for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be, uh, it, it's, it's going to be like, uh, I don't know the, the, the exact term to use it, but it's like uh, you are aiming uh, for, uh, how can I say, it's like, you are trying to go to the top of the mountain and somewhere along the line you slide and you find yourself down in the valley. So what I think is this, like you rightly said, these immigrants, they especially uh, those coming from Africa, they were aware that Rwanda exists. Uh, they are also aware uh, that Rwanda is operating on a kind of visa-free or open border policy uh, that can allow them to go to Rwanda if they like that, if they are from Africa. But then uh, their options were not Rwanda. And so uh, getting deported back to Rwanda after succeeding to cross, many people go uh, go to these Western countries by going through the desert or being in boats in the high seas, you know, taking all those risks and then just to end up being sent back to Africa. I think it's going to be depressing on uh, many of the immigrants, but to some, it's going to be like a glimmer of hope. Okay, not giving up at this stage, let's make do. Uh, there's a saying that when life gives you lemon, you do lemonade with it. Mm -hmm. So I think some are going to embrace it and try to integrate in the community and see if they can work and gather some money from there and then see how they can get out of there because I don't know, I've not read the treaty in its entirety, so I don't know if it's going to be like a permanent resettlement or it's just uh, a no, place it's not, to it's hold. It's not a permanent a resentment. It's not a permanent resentment. Uh, Rwanda has a committee that would uh, have a hearing. So you're just going to do like when you're in asylum, there you have a hearing to bring your documents, asylum show camps. proof of yes. what, yeah, if you claim that you had war in your country, you, you, you explain yourself and then they'll see if you're, they are giving you a, a kind of a prerogative. So it's, it's, they're going to have a committee that is going to have a full hearing of those that have genuine reasons. They are going to probably work back with the UK, but those that don't, they don't feel it's necessary, they're going to deport them. So Rwanda is like a transit, eh? They are going to still deport them back mm -hmm. to their countries when, after the hearing and investigations are done. And if they are certain, you know, some of them throw their passport. So they would investigate yeah. and look for where you're coming from. And if they are certain that, for example, you're from Nigeria and your reason for living is just for going to get greener pastures and whatever, you might be just deported, uh, deported back to Nigeria. So it's a process. It's a whole process, but it will take time. So Rwanda is providing that space and the time, if it's two, three, four years or five years, Rwanda is providing that space and the UK is sponsoring with a huge sum of money. So um, the next question I'll have for you, what is the reason for Rwanda accepting such? Because we know there's a huge sum of money behind and we know Rwanda is one of the the leading countries when it comes to development in Africa. We know uh, South Africa, Nigeria, and Rwanda. When it comes to development in this 21st century, Rwanda is at the top. It's really climbing the ladder. So uh, most people know, know that they are doing a lot, but uh, is it for the money or is it just the fact that they are trying to help Africans? Because one of the things uh, President Paul Kagame said is that most of those asylum seekers, some of them 
are not treated well. Some of them are just, it's just like you're locked up in one particular place for two years. Your life is not going in front or behind. You're just there. And so he feels that it's better you come back home and then they see how to resettle them. So uh, uh, do you think it's the, just to help Africa or it's for the money's sake or it's just to help develop his country or put people back in their homes? What do you think is the reason for Rwanda going in for such a treaty? Because Rwanda is the one who proposed this to UK. Yes. I think there are two things involved, to the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. the best of my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first is that um, Rwanda is not doing it because it's, uh, the country is so kind, it's so hospitable. You understand? I think yeah. first Rwanda wants to benefit from the financial, uh, the financial flow, the financial benefits uh, that's mm -hmm. going to come with it. Also, Paul Kagame wants to make a name. He wants to be Leave the first to go down in history. That he saved this number of people. Yeah, that could be true. Yes, he wants to be the first to go down in the annals of history that he he did this, he did that, he did that. Mm -hmm. Also, he wants to use that as a political as a political yes. block because we all know the history of Rwanda. Uh, in as much as uh, they say there is lack of freedom of expression, uh, lack of political uh, uh, decentralization in, um, in in Rwanda. I think while, before saying that, we, we all know that Rwanda is, uh, the Rwanda, Kagame is one of those presidents who rules his people with, with iron fist. Yep. And uh, that makes it, uh, that makes it the reason why he thinks that having small good name and blend it to the iron fist with which he handles his people is going to find a kind of neutral ground or is going to soften his political image out there. But then, doing that solely for the purpose of uh, maybe having a good face, having a political name, and also for financial benefits for Rwanda, I don't think it's good because this has to do with the fate of many individuals who many, who many families have maybe sold properties, sold farmlands and buildings in Africa for them to embark on uh, on this on these journeys, at times very perilous journeys, and then just for them to to, to be found in in Rwanda. And I, I also doubt the, uh, the, the the legal and judicial uh, capacity of Rwanda to set up a, a court that will be able to, to ascertain uh, if those uh, immigrants uh, to be given, uh, to be uh, to be awarded asylum in the UK, because we all know that part of some of those people who uh, who, uh, who who were at the the, the who orchestrated uh, the Rwandan genocide, uh, most of them were were tried out of Rwanda. Some in France, some in other countries like the Netherlands. And if today Rwanda can claim. Uh, it can set up a kind of a reputable uh, tribunal because the tribunal is going to be an international tribunal too. I don't know the name they're going to give it, but I know it's going to be like an international immigration tribunal because it's not going to be all Rwandan-based. Rwanda is going to get maybe expertise definitely, uh, from, definitely. Uh, from UK, UK. Because UK is working yes, with even from other, from yeah, from other African countries. So it's going to be... So Rwanda is doing it also to boost its diplomatic image because once that uh, that court is set up, it's going to be a, a an international organization set up there. So it's going to... Everything, I think, everything is just happening for Rwanda to, to boost its political image out there. But as for the entire uh, benefit to the immigrants themselves, it's not there, so that is not the reason why Rwanda is doing it. And like uh, the the other speaker has said, I fear for Rwanda too because in the long term or in the long run, what if Britain or the UK decide to back out of it? Who are we going to hold? What are they going to do with this? so many people that are put uh, in the detention centers in Rwanda? And what if uh, the, 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 there is an outbreak of insecurity? Yeah. Say these guys break or bend the jail and then get into the streets of Rwanda and then cause havoc. They can not only cause uh, physical havoc, they can, they can spread diseases, they can do so many things, they can rapidly increase the population of Rwanda by procreation, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is something that I don't think 
Rwanda should 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 hurry in implementing this treaty. A treaty can be signed and then implemented after 20 years. So I think having signed the treaty is good, but then Rwanda should should reinforce its capacities to hold this population that it is wanting to take into Rwanda.